Good morning. My name is Yvette Monique Ray, and I'm the president of the board of directors for Little Chamber Music. I'd like to acknowledge that Mountain View Cemetery is on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded lands of the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil-Waututh nations, and we are grateful to be able to create and to remember here. Thank you for joining us for our virtual Remembrance Day ceremony. Our annual events are always focused on individuals and the cost of war, as it is felt through families and generations. In order to mark the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, this year we are highlighting the forgotten stories of 75 enlisted women who died during their service with our project called WW75. Little Chamber Music has created Remembrance Day events since 2014. At that time, composer Mark Haney was artist in residence at Falaise Park, which is part of the Renfrew Heights Veterans Housing Project, a neighborhood created in 1948 to provide houses for veterans and their families. A piece of music, simply called Eleven, came out of that project, originally for 11 brass players and then arranged for 11 strings, and we have performed it most years since 2014. Eleven honors 11 specific veterans from Vancouver, including Laura Williams Heldon, who served with the Royal Canadian Air Force Women's Division. It seemed natural to give Laura the spotlight this year, so composer Mark Haney arranged her part for solo double bass to be performed now by Megan Williams.
WW75 was created to bring these forgotten stories into the light and to honour the tens of thousands who served far from the front lines. These stories are available online and this week you can come here to the Abray section of Mountain View Cemetery in order to read the stories on a series of beautiful signs designed by artist John Endo Greenaway. The piece of music created for this project is called WW75, a waltz for choir and brass, and was inspired by all the references in the women's war files about enjoying living in the barracks and living with other young women. The lyrics are the women's names, as if they were being called in to dance. The Vancouver Bach Choir performs the piece today, which was created with all the singers recording at home, performing to the brass quintet, whom we recorded in studio. At 11 a.m., the trumpeter will sound the opening statement, We Are Here to Remember, which will be followed by two minutes of silence. Following that, we have an introduction in English and French from Canadian Armed Forces veteran Joanne Charret, followed by WW75, a waltz for brass and choir. Thank you for joining us this morning as we remember the sacrifices made by individuals and take time to honour them in the best way possible by promising never again. Bonjour, mon nom est Joanne Charret. Je suis une ancienne membre des Forces armées canadiennes basées à Halifax. J'ai servi pendant 20 ans avant d'entreprendre une carrière dans la fonction publique. Cela m'a éventuellement mené vers un nouveau défi à l'Agence des services frontaliers du Canada en 2018. J'ai grandi dans une famille qui accordait toujours beaucoup d'importance au jour du souvenir. Mon grand-père était un vétéran de la Seconde Guerre mondiale et il parlait souvent de son expérience de, de la guerre, surtout à l'approche du 11 novembre. Le sacrifice consenti par mon grand-père au service du Canada a été pour moi une source d'inspiration. Lorsque j'étais adolescente, j'ai décidé de me joindre aux cadets dans le nord du Nouveau-Brunswick. L'expérience m'a tellement plu qu'à l'âge de 17 ans, je me suis enrôlée dans les forces armées canadienne, à titre d'officier du génie. Le dévouement de mon grand-père, que je portais dans mon corps lorsque j'ai entrepris ma carrière militaire, m'a aidé à relever les divers défis qui se sont présentés au fil des années. Mon grand-père est décédé en 2007. 
J'étais alors en déploiement en Afrique au sein de la force opérationnelle intégrée au Darfour et je n'ai pas pu lui dire adieu. Depuis le jour du souvenir revêt encore plus d'importance pour moi, car c'est une occasion de célébrer un homme que j'ai respecté profondément durant ma jeunesse. Mon grand-père m'a donné le courage d'aller jusqu'au bout de mes ambitions. Mais les 75 femmes auxquelles nous rendons hommage aujourd'hui et des centaines d'autres ont ouvert la voie à de nombreuses femmes au Canada, dont moi-même. Leurs histoires sont empreintes d'épreuves et d'adversités parce qu'elles ont eu l'audace de se tailler une place dans les domaines à prédominance masculine. Elles ont contribué à l'inclusion des femmes dans les forces armées. Malheureusement, ces femmes n'ont pas eu la chance de voir l'héritage qu'elles ont laissé aux générations suivantes. Je remercie chacune des femmes qui ont foncé pour faire tomber les barrières, car sans elles, je ne serais pas ici en train de vous parler aujourd'hui. Hello everyone. My name is Joanne Charret. I am a Canadian Armed Forces veteran based out of Halifax. I served for 20 years as a member of CAF before beginning my career as a public servant. This eventually led me to taking on a new challenge with the Canada Border Services Agency in 2018. Growing up, my family always recognized Remembrance Day as being very important. My grandfather was a World War II veteran, and he would frequently talk about his experience in the war, especially as number, November 11th approached. My grandfather's sacrifice as part of his service to Canada inspired me. As a teenager, I decided to join the Army Cadets in Northern New Brunswick. I enjoyed my time there so much that when I turned 17, I joined the Canadian Armed Forces as an engineering officer. I started my military career with my grandfather's dedication in my heart, and it guided me through the different challenges that came my way in the years that followed. In 2007, my grandfather passed away. At the time, I was on deployment in Africa as part of the Darfur Integrated Task Force and, was, and wasn't able to say goodbye to him. Since then, Remembrance Day has become even more important to me because it provides me with a day to celebrate the man I respected deeply while growing up. My grandfather gave me the courage to pursue my passions, but the 75 women we recognize today plus a hundreds more, have paved the way for many women in Canada, including myself. Their stories are ones of trials and tribulation. They weren't afraid to enter male-dominated fields, which helped to pioneer the inclusion of women in the military. Sadly, these women were not able to see the impact they had on the generations to come after them. I want to say thank you to each woman who took a chance and broke boundaries, for without them, I wouldn't be speaking to you today. Yeah. Uh -huh. 